Good morning. Today is Monday, May 4th, and as we learned in Star Wars, may the 4th be with you. A beautiful day outside. I hope you can get outside and enjoy, sit on your back porch or open a window and be grateful for the good weather today. And I was so glad that many of you joined us yesterday in worship. Worship was a great day yesterday. It is such a joy to work with the team that I work with. And this Wednesday, I do hope you're able to tune into a book for the young children. Uh, do Not Be Afraid is the title of it, I believe. So I look forward to uh, our children being uh, spiritually fed with our Christian Ed Director, Elder Chris Rice. So today's devotion, a short devotion today, Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You see, in Christ Jesus, God took our own humanity and nature in order to rescue us and restore us from broken relationships with one another, with our world right now, and with God. I once heard it put this way, God's grace works both horizontally and vertically. We receive God's grace from God coming down through us, the vertical relationship, and then God calls us to share this grace horizontally with those we know and love. When we give grace away freely, we receive God's grace freely. A lifelong Bible teacher shares this insight into God's unmerited and free grace. He found his faith troubled and challenged during his final years, and it seems that a degenerative nerve disease confined him to a bed, which impeded him from most of the activities that gave him pleasure. His 39-year-old daughter battled a severe form of diabetes, and financial pressures began to mount for the family. And during the most severe crisis, he composed a letter to send to all of his close friends and family members. And there were so many things he once taught and believed in his Bible class, which now caused him great stress and confusion as he suffered some severe blows in life. What is it that he could believe with great certainty? What was the most solid Christian belief he could muster up in his elderly years. He came up with three things. Life is difficult, God gives us grace, and heaven is sure. When this man's life became even more complicated, he held on to these anchor thoughts even more fiercely. Sometimes it's as if God lovingly pulls back the curtain on reality and gives us just a glimpse of some wonderful, strange reality that lies on the other side of this reality. When we experience those moments, I believe we experience God's grace to the fullest. It's almost as if we can taste, touch, and feel God's grace with us. Relish in such moments because it is those moments when God has touched your heart and creates in you a great desire to seek this surprising, adventurous God, even though right now we have to search for those because we are all held hostage, seemingly hostage, but we're taking care of ourselves. And so when your life becomes even more complicated, hold on to these thoughts even more fiercely. Life is difficult, God gives us grace, and heaven is sure. Life is indeed challenging. To help us navigate this life, God sent His Son who embodies grace. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. God's grace is a free gift to us. And this grace, as I said, flows down from God and through each one of us. God is love. And it is God's nature to pour out grace upon us, grace upon grace upon grace. Why? Because we are all made in the image of God, 
and where we're able to take this in, God provides strength and courage and promises to walk with us even when we become discouraged. You see, it is through God's Son, Jesus Christ, that we can come to know this grace. When we understand this in both our hearts and minds, we know that we are justified by grace, and there is a peace that comes from within us. Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, these daily devotions continue as well as our challenges continue. Prayers, Lord, for all of those who are suffering in this virus, for those, Lord, who have lost loved ones, those, Lord, who are, have the virus now and who have to hunker down and wait for their 12 days to be over. And we pray, Lord, that this time will come to pass very quickly so that your grace can be fulfilled in us as it can be these days. And we know, Lord, that you are always walking with us and providing us the strength. So may we reach out and feel and sense your ever-present grace because life is difficult. You give us grace and heaven is sure. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am really missing seeing all of you. And I so look forward, I, I, as I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I think and I pray for many of you. And so please know that my thoughts and prayers go out, not only to this congregation, but to all of those who are out of state listening to these daily devotions. So we continue to thrive, I feel, because God's grace is real. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow morning, Tuesday. Thank you. May the 4th be with you. Amen.